Hello class, this video analyzes the parts of the research paper to help you find sources that are appropriate for the college level. So, a quick breakdown of college research. College research is done uh, in various classes across all levels of your university experience. You will often be asked to find sources. This can mean several things throughout your college experience. In general, sources are materials that you use to write about a topic. Primary sources oftentimes are material you read and discussed during class. Secondary sources are often material you find that was not discussed in class. Secondary sources are often sources that are written about something. So if we read the case for reparations, any essays, articles responding to, criticizing, or analyzing the case for reparations would be a secondary source. Other classes will oftentimes ask you to do sources from peer-reviewed journals. Peer review is a process by which academic research is evaluated to make sure that it is quality. Finally, as always, you will need to use citation, like we've discussed all semester. If you have any questions, please refer to the MLA in-text citation section on Blackboard. And you will also, along with your in-text citations, be required to compile a works cited. A works cited page is a list at the end of the paper where you list the sources used to create the research. Some other terms you may encounter. You may have professors ask you to research in databases. Databases are collections of journals found online at our library. Now databases are different from web sources, although you may find sources uh, online that come from databases. Web sources refers to stuff anybody including your grandmother, can find online, what we might call a Google search. Finally, you will be asked to find sources that are non-biased. Whenever something has a certain source of bias, I think we can call it uh, essentially lying. Non-biased sources will present their point of view and argue for a position, but are always very clear about what they're arguing about. They will not try and hide evidence or ideas that make them look bad the way a liar does. So if you're asked to find a non-biased source, you're asked to find an honest source. Finally, research projects deal heavily with the issue of plagiarism. Plagiarism is when it's unclear to your professor what are your ideas and what are the ideas you have taken from what you have read to complete the research. So, whenever tasked with an assignment that requires research, please make sure you're doing the following. Step one, read the assignment sheet carefully. Oftentimes, you will need to read it twice. Ask yourself, what type of paper are you writing? Two, look for and underline directional statements. These can be words like define, identify, analyze, argue, evaluate, summarize, and so forth. How does the professor describe the assignment? Next, underline the due dates. When do you need stuff to be done? How are you going to turn it in? Finally, identify the evaluation criteria. What types of sources, usually taken from the list we just talked about, does the professor want you to use? Peer-reviewed sources, Sources from the database, sources from the web, sources from the library. Do they list a series of journals that you must look in? Ask yourself what types of sources you can use to create your research. Finally, above all, make sure that you are asking questions. So let's talk about what is acceptable research for our class and the research project we have begun this week. This is our list. For our class, anything that you use must use these four rules for research. It must meet all four. 
So any source that you're going to use to complete the research project must meet all of these sources. One, your source must have an author. You have to know who is writing your research. Right? This author must be someone that has a credible background. You should always Google the name of the author of any source that you are going to use for a college paper. Two, your source must have a publication date. You must know when something was published or posted online. Number three, your source must cite or reference its sources. You must know where the author you're using got the information they are writing about. In other words, you can't cite a plagiarizer. Number four, your, site, your source must be from a non-biased source. The source has to be honest and trustworthy. No lying, no clickbait, no trying to sell you something. So let's review. Your paper must have a source that meets all four of these criteria. It must have an author who is credible. It must have a publication date. It must reference its own sources, and it must be from a non-biased source. If it doesn't have all four of these, you cannot use it in the research paper. All right, remember, any source that has your name on it in a college paper is like you are vouching for it. You are telling your professor, this is the best material I can find on the topic, right? So if you are vouching for the sources in your paper, right, that means the professor will grade you on the sources you are using. If you are using bad sources, if you are taking the first thing you find in five minutes of a Google source, you can be evaluated on how poor your sources were. So just think of it, remember, any source that you use in a research paper is like you are vouching for a friend. If you are using it, then you are saying that it is good, and therefore your professor will grade you on the quality of source you are using. So uh, the next video will pick up here where we will discuss time management in research projects.